Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video, we're going to discuss the common ion effect. So we're going to review our understanding of solution equilibria. Uh, that is the equilibrium that gets established when a compound dissolves in water, especially one that's only very sparingly soluble. We're then going to introduce what we mean by this phrase of the common ion effect. And then we're going to see how it impacts or, or how we conduct calculations that involve the common ion effect. So let's have a firstly go back and have a look at the equilibria that get established when a sparingly soluble compound dissolves. We get an equilibrium between the solid and the ions that it forms in solution. So for example, when lead iodide dissolves in water, that we get lead ions and then iodide ions that are aqueous. And then the ratio of the ions and how they're put together in the compound affects then the, the mole ratio of how many ions we get when it dissolves. We can use the solubility product or KSP as an expression that allows us to calculate the concentration of each of these ions in the equilibrium and we can use, um, use the, the KSP expression like so, um, remembering to raise each one to the power of, of its coefficient. And then um, that means that we can use this value to calculate the molar solubility, how much, how many moles of this compound will dissolve for every litre of solvent and vice versa. Okay, so we know that this is a relationship that exists. We know that these compounds dissolve even just a tiny bit, but they're in equilibrium with the solid that's there and that we can make calculations involving these. Now the common ion effect is uh, it concerns us when we're thinking about what if a, a substance is dissolving in a solution that already contains one or more of the, the ions that are trying to dissolve? What if you're trying to fit ions into a solution that's already got some there? So for example, if we were trying to dissolve barium sulfate in a solution that contained sodium sulfate, we can see that there's sulfate ions already dissolved in that solution. So then that, that suggests to us that that's going to have an impact. Um, and, and it allows, you know, when we're, we're thinking about this, we can think, all right, well, how is it going to affect the solubility of this barium sulfate? Is more going to dissolve? Is less going to dissolve? And why? And so the solubility of any substance can be changed by the presence of some other substance in the solution. Now, we're not just saying, all right, well, random substance A is affected by random substance B, but rather we're thinking about what we call the common ion effect, when both compounds have one or more ions in common. So um, you're trying to dissolve barium sulfate in a sodium sulfate solution. So the, sodium, the sulfate ion is in common between these two compounds. Um, you know, trying to dissolve lead chloride in a sodium chloride solution, for example. Or trying to dissolve um, sodium chloride in a sodium sulfate solution. Okay, so the, the, those sorts of things. Um, and so we call this phenomenon the common ion effect. So if we look at our example here of our barium sulfate, dissolving in a sodium sulfate solution, if, if it's already present, or if it's dissolved and then we add, um, if, if we add sodium sulfate, the solubility is going to decrease. Now, Le Chatelier's principle gives us a logical way to predict this because we've added extra sulfate ions, which is the product on the right-hand side. We're going to get a shift to the left in this equilibrium, which means we're going to form more solid um, barium sulfate, or that is less of that solid will be dissolved. Okay, so it starts to precipitate out. Okay, because KSP is constant at a constant temperature, we can do these calculations to make predictions. We can also then be able to predict, all right, well, how much less will dissolve? What will the, the amount that dissolves be based on this? It's, it's, it's not just a qualitative kind of woo-woo, we don't really know the answer kind of thing. We can actually pinpoint this with accuracy, and I'll show you a little bit of how. So let's look at an example of a calculation where the common ion effect will have a, um, an impact. Okay, so looking at lead chloride, KSP of 1.70 times 10 to the minus 5 at 25 Celsius. So let's look at its molar solubility when we're trying to dissolve it in a 0 0.20 mole per litre sodium chloride solution. Okay, so notice that the chloride ion is in common. So let's set up an ice table. For the dissolution of lead chloride, we get one lead ion for every and two chloride ions for every mole of lead chloride that dissolves. Now, so initially, before we've actually dissolved any lead chloride, we have zero moles per litre of lead, but we do have 0 0.20 moles per litre of sodium of chloride. Sorry. Um, and so that, that, that's the amount that is already there. Now, the amount that, that the lead chloride is going to contribute, let's call it X 
moles. X moles will dissolve, so that we're producing X moles of lead and 2X moles of chloride because of that 1 to 2 ratio. So at equilibrium, we're going to have X moles per litre of lead ions and 0.2 plus 2X moles per litre of chloride ions. But the reality is that because lead chloride is, is really only very, very, very slightly soluble, that the 2x that's going to be there is so small that we can effectively ignore it. It's going to be much smaller than the 0.2 moles per litre um, that was there to start with. So we can approximate the amount of chloride to be just pretty much the same. And you'll, you'll see why in a moment. Okay, but so now we can write out our KSP expression. We can substitute in the values that we know, trying to solve for x. And then we can rearrange and solve to get x equals 4.3 times 10 to the minus 4 moles per litre. So if we imagine this number and we add double this onto it, that we're talking, you know, of a very, very small change, a very negligible um, extra amount of chloride compared with what was there to start with. So the assumption there is quite reasonable. Um, and it also makes the, the maths of our, our situation a lot simpler to solve because you don't have to use the quadratic formula or some sort of, con, um, you know, convoluted um, solving mechanism. All right. So it, it means that this process becomes a lot easier. So we reviewed the solution equilibria, the, looking at how sparingly soluble compounds dissolve in water and seeing that the KSP expression can help us to determine amounts in this situation. We looked at the common iron effect, the idea where um, one or the, you know, that when one compound is trying to dissolve in a solution that already contains one or more of the same ions, we see that it decreases the solubility because we shift out a solution equilibrium to the left, to the solid side. But we've seen that we can use the, the relationships we know to be able to perform calculations to get us the answers that we're after. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.